Hey everyone, Frank Fix 8 here. Back here with another video. I'm going to take a break from my current fixation, which is the EV bike project, to instead work on my POS Daily, which is a 2007 Chevy Impala with 214,000 miles. Today, I'm going to have to fix all four motor mounts, so I'm going to teach you guys how to do that. To replace your motor mounts, you're going to need the following items. First, you're going to want work gloves. It's really sludgy down there by the engine, so I would suggest. Then you're going to need a jack, some jack stands, and multiple blocks of wood. For wrenches, I would suggest a 3 8 size. I would suggest an extension, a swivel, just in case you need to get to those hard to reach places. 15 and 13 millimeter long and deep sockets, a 3 8 ratcheting wrench, 19 millimeter sockets and an adapter maybe for getting the wheels off, and a breaker bar. And in terms of breaking some stuff loose, I would suggest some penetrating spray and maybe a little small torch. I have a butane torch, it's pretty cheap, it's like 30, 40 bucks. Um, I also have a wire brush to clean away some rust and gunk and some shop towel to help keep things relatively clean during the job. So first what we're going to do is we're going to jack up the car. I currently have it already on jack stands, but the two places that I use are right there behind the wheel and then over there behind the wheel on the passenger side. Now, if you only have hand tools, I would suggest before jacking up the car all the way, make sure that the wheels have a little bit of contact on the ground, and then go ahead and break the lug nuts loose, and then lift it up and remove them from there. So the order I'm going to be doing this in is actually the top two first and then the bottom two. And I'm going to do these one at a time to keep the engine constrained to the car throughout the entire duration of this project. And I'm going to actually reuse all of the hardware, the connecting pieces, because unfortunately the set that I got didn't come with spares. Uh, these are looking a little rusty, but I'm going to try and keep these together as much as possible so that I can reuse them. And I'm actually going to hit them with a little bit of penetrating spray first just so that it makes it even easier to come out. The second motor mount is actually gonna be on the passenger side behind a piece of trim as well. And I have this one pulled back a little bit. So the other motor mount on the underside is gonna be this guy right here underneath this pulley. So in order to get there, we're gonna to have to put the jack underneath, put a block of wood in between the jack and the oil pan, push the engine up a little bit to release some pressure and remove the five bolts that connect this guy together and then the other bolts that connect the other guy and then also remove these. And then after replacing all four, we should be done.
Okay, so next, since the passenger side engine mount is closer towards the passenger side, I'm going to adjust the jack so that it's closer to that mount so I get more clearance when I start taking it apart. Okay, so a little bit more about this part is that it's going to be oriented like this inside it. So you can see that there is a bolt right here but there isn't one on my part. And that's because there's actually a metal plate right here that connects to this bolt. So I'm gonna remove this. There's two bolts, one there and one there. And then I'm gonna reuse this plate and then this new motor mount is gonna go back on. And then we'll be done with this one. So I'll have to take this apart after I remove it and then reassemble this one and then put it in there. On the underside of this, there's gonna it's gonna look like this so you're gonna have to go through the frame and there's a bolt right here on this side and then on the far side this guy So I did this bolt that goes right here. Let me show better. The one that goes right here off camera because it was very difficult. But what I did to get that one loose is that I did a pro tip and I took a 15 millimeter wrench, which is the size that it is. And then I wrapped another socket wrench around it like this. What I did was I took this wrench and I took this wrench and I connected it here at this end. If I, if I want to turn this way, I'm going to go like this and then push. And now I have leverage. And if I want to go the other way, I do the same thing and then I push this way. So I cleaned this plate off that goes up here, and now I'm gonna finagle the new motor mount in. So my camera died while I was tightening some stuff down, but I took a 15 millimeter open end crescent wrench and tightened that down by hand. It took me quite a minute, so I'm okay with it not being on camera. And then I did the same thing for the other side with the bolt right there in the dead center of the camera feed right there. And then after that, what I did is I slowly lowered the engine incrementally, bit by bit, until I was able to get that screw in and then started the thread turned it a couple of times and then did the same thing lower it incrementally bit by bit to lower that portion of the engine down to get that bolt started and screwed that in and then now all I need to do is get this one lined up right here in the middle 
and then all I need to do is just tighten everything down and I can put the pressure off the engine. I'm done with this side. And then one more thing, all I have to do is tighten the bolt that goes up there, or sorry, nut that goes up there, and the nut that goes up there, and then it's done. transmission mount side there's gonna be a piece of trim that looks like this and there's gonna be two body pins one right here where my pinky is and then the other one right over here you can use a flathead screwdriver you can use some needle nose pliers to wiggle your way underneath them and then pry them out and then pop them back in but my car is bootleg AF so I have some nuts and bolts put here instead to make it easier to put on and take off because I need to do it a lot on this car and then once you peel this away, this is the transmission mount right here. There's two bolts up at the top, you see. So one right here, one right here. And then there's two bolts at the bottom as well. One right there and one right there. I got that last bolt that was right here off while I was off camera. One, it started to rain, and two, I ran into a little bit of a snag. In order to get it off, I hit it with both penetrating spray, and I have a butane torch with some gas. And after hitting it with penetrating spray a couple of times, I hit it with some heat, let it heat up, and then did the old double crescent wrench trick like I showed, and I was able to get it free. And now I actually lifted up the engine and transmission enough for me to just be able to weasel this out and then I can put the new one in and then we can put it all together again and then we'll be done. Okay so here's both of them. Obviously this one's the one on the left which was the old one which is the one I just uninstalled and that's looking pretty bad but thankfully I got a new one that looks to be in perfect condition and we're gonna go ahead and install that one so as our Lord and Savior Chris Fix says, out with the old and in with the new. I'm making sure not to tighten them up all the way so that I have a little bit of play as I lower the transmission. Down.
my car now. And originally when I was driving it around, I could tell it was bad motor rounds because when I slammed on the brakes, I could hear a loud clunk. And I can't hear it anymore when I slam on the brakes. Also, I could hear when I press on the accelerator really hard too. So I was really like feathering the pedal whenever I wanted to go fast. Also, I could hear it even when I was turning too. So that told me that quite a few of the mounts were bad, if not all of them. So I just went ahead and replaced all of them anyways. Um, and now, can't hear anything.